So periodicity is a uh, really important but when it, if I say what is periodicity, people find it quite difficult to explain. Um, does anybody come up with any idea when they say, without looking at what I've just given you, periodicity? Yeah. It could be like describing the properties of elements and compounds. A little bit, but it's what the actual word is, what, what's it actually relating to the periodic table? How the periodic table yet yeah, it's, it's a trend, so that's one key thing, but it's what? Like yeah, the nature of the structure of the table. It is. It's a trend in the table. There's one key thing. It's a trend that goes across here. And if I saw this, it would be the same trend I would see across here. So trends within periods. Yeah, trends within periods, but it's a repeating trend across each period. So Whatever period I go across, I see a friend. You're used to it, GCSE, looking at groups. So you said all of these react in the same way. These are all alkaline metals, so they all react in the same way. Uh, alkaline earth metals we're going to look at um, in a week or so, they all react. So it kind of makes sense that if I look across here, I see an alkaline metal, an alkaline earth metal, group three, group four, group five. I'm going to see the same pattern in properties as I go across here, and I see the same pattern as I go across here. So it's a repeating pattern in properties, and there's certain properties that we have to look at. The simplest one is the electron structure as we go across. So how do the electron structures of each of these repeat itself as I go across? So before we get into the nitty gritty of that, what you will notice is the first repeating pattern is that of the electronic configuration because all of these guys have 1s1, these guys have, oh, sorry, these guys have s1, these guys have s2, these would be p1, p2, p3, p4, p5, p6. Yeah. So it's the same pattern that you always see across it, which is kind of how the periodic table is structured. So that is the first pattern. And that's why we call this, if you come across this, it's called the S block, because we're filling up the S um, subshell. This is a D block, because we're filling up that. That's a P block. On your handout, you notice, this is hydrogen, and that's helium. These move, depending on the periodic table you're looking at. Um, what captures a lot of people out, this, is period one. So often on papers they'll say, uh, give me an element which is in period two, and they'll automatically look here, but this is period two here. So they often forget that that one is period one, that's period two, and that's period three. So your first repeating pattern is the electronic configuration. You always see the same pattern as I go across each period, like so. So for some reason, AQA want us to look across period three. So let's bring back our, our periodic table again. So this is period three going along here. Do you notice that these, as I go across, sodium and magnesium and aluminium, they're all metals. So they would all lose electrons to form positive ions. What's silicon? Is silicon a metal or a non-metal? It's like a metal. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's an evo. He's got property, properties of both metals and um, non-metals. Uh, you're happy that you have like your little staircase line going down here which separates your metals and your non-metals. So, so silicon um, is uh, uh, so like got properties of both metals and non-metals. Phosphorus, sulfur, and chlorine and argon are all non-metals as you go across. And you see that so you go from metals to non-metals always as you go across the periodic table. Um, and we're going to be focusing on period three. 